Yes, uh, we can start the second session for the day. Today for our uh, second session, we have Rajkumar, a uh, senior application engineer in VA Solutions, Bangalore. Rajkumar R graduated as electrical and electronics engineering from Anna University, Chennai. Currently, he is designated as senior application engineer in VA Solutions, Bangalore, handling the major responsibility of supporting various industries in implementing several turnkey systems and system integration projects using national instrument products. Rajkumar, as a certified LabVIEW developer, has traveled far and wide throughout India and has delivered thought provoking lectures on. LabVIEW basics and data acquisition. He also had conducted many faculty development workshops on various trending technologies such as embedded and control design, image processing, etc. With this, I welcome Rajkumar for our first simulation session. Um, thank, thank you very much. much. So I believe my voice is audible. Yes, yes. Uh, just a minute, Rajkumar. I request all the participants to mute your mics. Okay, thank you, sir, for the warm welcome. It's uh, really a very good honor for me to be a part of this you know, honored FTP program at uh, uh, GCE. So, with that being said, let us, uh, without further ado, let us just jump back in the session, and I'll just convey what are the things you know which we are going to do today, and what are the technologies which are you know offered by us, and what is used by us. Okay, so that. Apart from other tools, okay, so we will we'll get to have an idea on what are the other tools which are being you know, used in the industry and how efficient they are compared to the other tools which are available with us already. Okay, so already my name has been introduced, but you know, let me just introduce my company as well. Okay, so we are VA Solutions. Um, we are a, a technical partner for national instruments. And I believe everyone will be knowing about national instruments. It's a test and automation company. Uh, which is, you know, uh, focused on providing uh, hardware and software to, you know, support for several industries focusing on automotive, aerospace, automation, semiconductors, okay, and other systems, okay, and uh, they are the pioneers of the software called as NI LabVIEW, okay, and LabVIEW software is used by millions of engineers and scientists all around the world. To develop, you know, test automation and you know, uh, automotive systems for you know several, um, you know, several, you know, um, tools, right? Several tools and technologies. So there are several other tools as well. Okay, along with national instruments or line of work. Okay, apart from software, they are also providing hardware to both data acquisition okay to acquire data from the real world environment and bringing it inside the hard computer for further analysis and this computer could be a pc in you know, a windows based computer or they also have several real time computers as well okay to have measurement and controls and today what we are going to see is how this particular tool of labview and you know the other tools of ni software and hardware is used in um, predominantly in several you know, different life cycles, life you know, life cycle steps of developing um, MPPT charge controller, okay, for renewable energy using you know the our tools which we have been speaking about, All right? So yes, so we are going to see about. The charge, you know, charge, charging station, okay, and uh, how we can implement this using renewable energy. We're just, we're just going to uh, talk a few words about it. Then we are going to see what are the tools, okay, which are predominantly used by NI, okay, which is which NI offers for their, you know, clients and partners, okay, to develop solutions, okay, for developing this charging station, okay, also in the realm of renewable energy. So one such tool is a circuit design tool, okay, to develop and prototype the circuit involved in you know, charge controlling. And next one is after that, okay, we might need to implement some MPPT algorithms, okay, in order to 
you know create a control system for controlling this solar panel based you know i mean the photovoltaic cell based you know npvd charge controller so for that there should be as one development tool okay and there's this tool called as lab view which helps us in prototyping as well as implementing the final product okay we're going to see about that and after that it's not going to just be simulation we need to turn the simulation oriented results to an actual reality of building a product so there must be some link between the simulation to implementing the actual product so we are just, we're just going to get some insights on how we can use this lab view to interact with certain hardware and how we have done it okay so if we can do it anyone can do it right so we are just going to see about these things okay so everyone knows that electrical vehicle is making a boom across the industry okay so it can it, it sideline the um the, the fuel based that is the conventional fuel based um vehicles okay nowadays every manufacturer is moving towards the electrical vehicle previously the there was a jump from electrical vehicle to hybrid electrical vehicles and now it's going fully electrical even the producers of normal vehicles it is combustion engine uh, combustion engine based vehicles they deny that electrical vehicles would lose you know their silver lining and they denied that it will ever replace the actual you know the combustion engine vehicles but more some of the players like tesla and the other players okay they have big made it wrong okay so now these people who the they say very people who said that this is impossible are now moving towards the electrical vehicles okay so that is made possible and if you see electrical vehicles even though they don't require internal uh, internal combustion engine okay they require fuel i mean i mean the normal engines require fuel and similarly electrical vehicles also require us to charge it okay some electrical charges to be carried and in order for us to charge it okay there should be substantial charging station okay not to not be as an infrastructure so how do we go about it supporting it and what are the uh, support is provided by not only by you know the technical manufacturers like ni or other companies okay but also what government is providing okay because ultimately without government support even the companies cannot set up like right now tesla is trying to set up its base in india but you know electrical vehicle apparently electrical vehicle uh, portfolio in india is not that much profitable people say okay at least for newcomers to come inside so that's why ev you know uh, tesla is trying to um, bargain more okay to get more into its hand and if you if you see electrical vehicle there are multiple parts on it okay so we have you know predominantly primary part is you know your uh, battery and next one is going to be the you know powertronic components inside that is electrical vehicle and converter and third one is going to be the motor okay these three things are the the most important aspect of an electrical vehicle from the electrical standpoint okay we also have mechanical you know design oriented design and you know software oriented design inside but from electrical standpoint these are the most important things and in order to bring this power from to your battery okay we need to obviously charge it so the fourth one the fourth important one is this onboard charger so this charging mechanism is also very important because it enables us to you know help us store the energy inside the you know vehicle so that it can move that it can propel the vehicle to its own to its destination so how do you go about designing it right so this is a you know basic um you know uh, you can say it's a building block of a electrical vehicle so it has this you know electrical motor the transmission single ratio transmission capabilities and to power the electrical vehicle motor okay we need to we cannot directly connect the battery pack to it okay possibly we need to have some speed control so speed control possibly means maybe we will vary the voltage level or frequency to you know variable frequency drive to control the motor speed okay so there should be a you know appropriate dc to ac converter and a controller or both of them combined together to a you know formal circuit and this is going to be powered by a battery pack and this battery pack should be charged okay so that's what is going to add, you know replace the fuel but in order to charge this battery pack we need to have a you no know, appropriate charging station 
okay either a fast charging station you know dedicated charging station okay which can charge it substantially faster or we could power it to the plug in our you know uh, 230 volts 50 hertz ac line with an onboard charger this is going to be comparatively slower okay compared to the you know dedicated charging point because it can deliver more power the dc charging station okay it's going to be more faster right so this is conventional way of charging this dc charging say you know which is powered by an electrical grid okay but now we need to think about how we can implement a renewable energy based you know charging station okay it's not going to be that much um you know uh, difficult per se okay only thing we need to consider is how we can in, you know get the instead of getting it from a grid okay how we can make use of the the renewable alternate energy line that is uh, you know um, possibly most most probably a, a you know electric you know pv photovoltaic cell based grid okay photovoltaic based power okay how we can convert to something which can charge the battery right so we are just going to replace the grid with this one but how we can go about prototyping or creating a, a model of out of it so what are the tools which we have with our hand Okay, but before that, we need to understand what is the drive behind this. How, what, what motivate motivates us to create these things, right? So the motivation for a company or anyone is going to be the government policy. Because if let's say if there is a restriction from government, okay, then then we need to think about setting this up in the first place. Okay, but unfortunately, government has very bright policies. Okay, they have this. You know, anyone can set up charging station at residences. Okay, and offices also should be permitted. And public charging system can also be, you know, it's a de-licensed activity. Okay, it need not be, you know, licensed fully, and, it, and there is no uh, permission to set up or something like that. Okay, there is a lot of pros and cons to this. Okay, if it's not de-licensed, typically people will, you know, take advantage of it and they'll make cheaper but faulty products or something like that. Okay, but you know, uh, at at an in initial stage, everything is learning stage. Okay, so as of now. It is assumed that people will you know, do it properly and it's de-licensed activity right now. And if required, power distribution company should facilitate power connectivity to any person. If the power, if the data, if, the, if it is not provided by the power distribution company, they should be allowed to set up their own power, you know, like um, a massive uh, electrical, you know, um, I mean, that is solar, solar panel based so, you know, uh, electrical power station. So they should be able to set it up and from any generation company which means they could set up their own you know um plant okay solar plant nearby just to charge it so these are the government current government policies towards cv and you know people will keep on changing this but as of now this is the case and charging connectors okay so these are also very important okay because depending on the type of the charging and which is going to take place and there are different you know electrical vehicle players and there should be a just like how we have for your cell phone we have a universal charge you know universal a serial port okay to charge you know, usb port to charge it okay for there should be a, a centralized way to charge our ev so there are different connectors available okay even in india also we have a, a you know a standard way to charge it Okay, and the dated voltage, everything is standard. Just like five volts for your cell phone, okay, it's going to be here. Um, the dated voltage is going to be set up, right? So these are the BAS standards provided for fast, slow, moderate, you no know, charge connectors. Okay, so this should be followed by any player and electrical vehicle who is going to set up their own, you know, vehicle, you know, manufacturing as well as selling it. Okay, if they're providing the mechanism for selling okay they should be able to you know, give us a way to charge it as well so these are the connector types okay which have been approved and of course um, requirements also have been set up okay or not even though policies have been very moderate right now okay they have said that these things should be these are the things which should be followed okay at least through two you know charges minimum for um to 200 to 1000 volts each okay and single gun with each to minimum charging requirements have been set up 
okay and cooling cables okay they also should be you know used for uh, in order to prevent high power dissipation they are saying appropriate equipped cooling cables for high seas charging should be set up right so these are some of the things which they say okay it needs to be set up and of course there are many challenges associated with ev market in india okay but one thing which we are going to focus on focus on is the inadequate charging stations and another one which we are going to focus is inadequate power supplies in parts of india so if you see in india power supply supply and demand okay it's going to be you know very uh, closely packed together so if the ev is becoming a major player then we may see a deficit in power supply so to counter that instead of burning more fossil fuels since india has in abundance of um, solar you know uh, solar energy and also uh, adequate amount of wind energy in some parts of the india okay it's high time that people will you know should make use of this so it's reported to have right now india is reported to have as of now 650 charging stations in 2018 okay um, it's a very old you know um, survey but now it's it's been grown up to i believe 2000 charging stations or more okay and if you compare it to china okay they have 456 charging stations right now it's over a million and apart from that private parking spaces is not also you know in india not everyone has a private parking space so it's difficult to set up a a parking space for specifically for this right so now it's high time that in, you know instead of already burdening the you know um already burdened power supply you know the grid with this you know this burden of charging the electrical vehicles where the load is going to be increased much more okay we need to make use of other unconventional way of um you know um charging our vehicles so it is going to be purely green energy based system okay instead of putting stress on already stressed coal power grid so what we can do about it okay what are the systems which we can design and what are the tools available okay from low level you know perspective of um, designing and implementation so yes there are plenty of tools available within the nis ecosystem okay one such tool is um, circuit design suit so you might ask why circuit design suit and to answer that so circuit design suit here is used for very simple purpose okay in order to model our power electronic circuits inside our charging station okay so to extract power from a solar panel and to you know basically to first simulate it okay check how it's going to work how are its behavior characteristics okay first we need to have an appropriate simulation tool which is going to help us do it okay so and i offers a tool in designing of you know power electronic circuit okay there's a tool for power electronic design prototyping okay and once the prototyping is done then basically for designing a an element to monitor and control the particular circuit yes we do have a way for that and once that is done typically we need to make use of that circuit to either charge a battery or maybe drive a you know, motor or something like that okay so for building electrical machine drive okay so everything here is basically in the perspective of power trans so what tool can be used to you know at least software based prototyping how we can do okay is the question most people ask and let's say for prototyping perspective if you see we need to have a um, some power electronic components okay it could be a dc to dc or dc to ac so for you know instead of directly going on and building this component and doing a trial and error method what can we better use to simulate its aspects so in order to do that in ni tools okay we have a tool called as ni multisim okay which is nothing which is a part of circuit design platform in labview okay this multisim tool is a the circuit design tool which enables enables us to build a schematic of a circuit then go ahead in going ahead with you know piece by piece based simulation of the circuit 
then once that is done okay we'll be able to create a printed circuit board based you know uh, design for the circuit which you have simulated okay for further prototyping actual you know real world prototyping so to simply put we will build our polytronics based circuit model in the multisim okay, it's going to help us build the model then once that is done once the once you are done with creating of the circuit mono polytronic based circuit in multisim then ultimately we need to have a system which can you know simulate its aspects probably to control the circuit okay to create a control system for the circuit we need to have a way to do that as well okay so how do we go about on that is the next question which people ask and to answer the question um, to answer the question okay so we already have the circuit with us so we need to create uh, an algorithm or you know we need to focus that algorithm on that circuit so algorithm development is typically done by a computer software or a program and using this program we need to control the circuit so typically people what they do is they build a circuit then they use a membered system to control it but instead of directly jumping into that aspect first we need to be able to gen no so you know to we should be able to test that algorithm whether it really works in the software itself so here we use lab view to do that okay we use lab view and that lab view we develop that algorithm okay to control okay it could be a you know a closed loop PID based algorithm to control the you know the circuit or the MPPT algorithm which is available to control the circuit or whatever it is. Okay, that can be developed in LabVIEW because LabVIEW is basically a, a programming tool. Then that data from the LabVIEW, the commands from the LabVIEW, whatever voltage level or current level is fixed, okay, it will be transferred to Multisim and Multisim will act upon the whatever data which has been given. Then once the data, the command is given here, your multisim is going to act upon it and a response will be brought back to LabVIEW again for viewing the data back. Okay, so this will look like LabVIEW is controlling multisim and it's responding back to it. Okay, so preferably we can generate, most probably we can you know, adjust the duty cycle of the uh, you know, let's say uh, DC DC converter in the lab view, and that will be sent to Multisim. And Multisim will respond back. Okay, it will send back the voltage data with respect to whatever duty cycle you have set here. And that's going to help us validate whether this circuit might work in real life or not. Most of the time, like 99% of the time, it works. Okay, but there could be some real life, real world, you know, real world parameters which could prevent the data from working. So if after that, you know, implementation doesn't work, but I haven't seen any place time like that. Okay, so again, we need to go back to the drawing board. We need to check what went wrong. Uh, we need to include those uh, parameters which we have missed during the uh, initial point. So this is what we will be doing. right so yeah so how is it possible what made it possible so first step which is involved here is okay so first will be design okay obviously using ni um ni's version of you know polytronics okay first we design then we prototype but when we design only okay we also create testing you know um, values for this okay software based testing so most of the time using lab view we do something called test driven development so whenever we design something in software we also write some test cases for it okay so and next one is prototyping during the prototyping itself we might have simulated that prototype value okay by using something like hil testing Okay, we develop the HIL model of the same circuit and we will test it in real time. And we will say whether this is going hand in hand. 
then once we are satisfied with that level of testing okay we will deploy it in the commercial you know way so wherever this is going to be used okay that will be used in the only process so this is the vision for Paltronics. Apart from this, Paltronics could be used for any domain. Okay, it could be used for automotive, renewable energy. Okay, it could be used in semiconductors, anything. And it finds applications in many places. Okay, you have grid control inverters, wind turbine power converters, utility scale, multi-level drives, electric hybrid vehicles, okay, so on and so forth. Let's see how the is going to help us. Okay, so first we develop the code in Multisim. Okay, they're not code, not the circuit emulation in the Multisim. Then we basically make use of lab view to communicate with Multisim. Okay, use the asset. Duty cycle as this one, set duty cycle as 30, 40, whatever it is. Okay, so it will be basically slow over loop. And, you know, once that is done, okay, we may need to do some closed loop control, okay, where we make, you know, take into consideration the, the, the output as well. Okay, let's say you want to set the output voltage as some, something like a chargeable battery, you know, battery chargeable voltage. Okay, only once we set it. Okay, so that voltage should be, you know, fixed as constant, let's say. So there should be an algorithm which helps us, you know, maintain that voltage. So that's going to be, you know, something which we have to deploy it. Okay, by using some programming tool and that uh, as a, you know, a developer, I consider LabVIEW to be very easy for an engineer. Okay, so the advantage in LabVIEW is LabVIEW is not only for software control, but for hardware control as well. So which makes it, you know, if I, you know, for, when during the simulation itself, 95% of your job is done. Okay, you cannot say 95, 95 is an exaggerated value. Okay, let's say 70% okay, of your job is done. Okay, if you are verified with the simulation okay next stop is replacing that multisim with the hardware okay so well that's what we do okay we just replace this multisim inputs and outputs in lab view with an actual hardware which is capable of you know controlling the circuits right So not only is that the advantage, okay, we use LabVIEW, LabVIEW is also graphical in nature, okay, not only in terms of programming, okay, you can also create an application per se, okay, which, you know, helps us to view the data in, in, a, in a very friendly manner, user-friendly manner in the computer itself. Okay, it also helps us to control that circuit by using this you know, software which has been created. Okay, if you see there's a, a you know a monitoring station okay for a a three phase inverter. Okay, you can see that there is a a three phase monitoring value. Here also we see that we have the switch control, switch monitoring. We can also set up other parameters here as well. So on and so forth. And ultimately, after you're satisfied with the simulation, okay, let's say you want to implement it. Okay, you can use an appropriate NI-based hardware to implement it and check whether whatever you have simulated is, you know, does it really work in real world or it's just simulation, you know, uh, dummy data. So you can do that as well. Okay, you can place these components on top of these boards. Okay, we can send that voltage data to this particular circuit and get the response. Okay, you can control the, uh, you know, the master gate and we can get the response back in oscilloscope. Okay, so there are some dedicated hardware which help, enables you to make measurements and controls uh, easier task.
and of course we are going to build a circuit okay of an impurity charge controller okay using the multisim then typically ex you know, explore how we can control this using lab view and after the multisim part how we can proceed towards the other parts is what we need to see but let's just understand how multisim will look like okay just a few minutes then we'll start designing the circuit So this is what is multisim is. Okay, it's a integrated circuit design platform. Okay, which is basically you know used to create this circuit schematic, then simulate it. Okay, for simulation purpose. Okay, it has n number of you know components as well as instruments, which enables you to just rapidly prototype a simulation based circuit and make measurements of it in a very easy to use manner. okay so you can see about that here okay let's see how we can build circuits using multisim very quickly okay so you have this in order to bring components inside the multisim all you have to do is use mouse okay mouse is your you know, favorite friend if you right click can just create place component you can see a number of components are available okay as a matter of fact you have like 53,942 components in total Okay, because it's education edition, okay, it's going to have 53,000. Okay, but ultimately, Multisim has around five to six lakhs components okay, in it. So you can, that's only available in Power Pro. Okay, it's going to have a lot of features in it. Okay, so most of the features are not really required. Okay, this is actually, to be honest, it's enough. Okay, but if you want to just go ahead with the, the feature information, so you can just check it out. So now, now trying to search among 53,492 components, 692 components is not really a good way. So there's a way how we can streamline these components, okay? How each of these components are grouped together, okay? Depending on their family. So you can select those components by going to group. And here we see that there is there are different types of groups available. Okay, depending on your usage, you can select that. For example, okay, let's say you want a simple power supply. You can go to power supply. I mean your sources. Okay, basically, so power supply is a source. Okay, so you have it here. And we can select it from here. And here also we have like all families, everything has been integrated to one single form factor. And this is not a really good idea because still we have 88 components to check from, check out from. But instead you can select individual type of sources. Okay, you have a power source available. Okay, AC, DC power which is quite easy to use functions, okay, which you can make use of. Or if you want to go for voltage specific functions, okay, you have voltage sources as well. And if you want to control sources, okay, you also have control sources. Okay, so no stopping us from using any particular stuff. So, yeah, this is signal sources, power sources, and you have AC power, DC power, 
place or whatever is convenient for us, we can use it. So right now I'm just going to go for DC power. I'm setting it and I'm just giving OK. I place it here. Then next component is your basic components. Okay, your basic you have basic virtual components. Okay, there are plenty of components available, of course. Okay, so basic components is where you'll find very basic components like resistor, capacitor, inductor, even relay also if you want you can find it. Okay, most of the components will be here. Basic it is. But also other complex components like, you know, if you want uh, Z load, okay, something like that, you could find it here. Now I'm just going to go with the resistor component. So here I have, by default, it just shows me one kilo ohm resistor. And you can see the symbol of the resistor is being displayed here. Apart from that, there are other things which you may not be very interested right away, but you know there are options available with it which you can feel free to explore. Okay, I'm just going to set up this one kilo ohm. And I set it, I can just place it anywhere I like. So once that is done, you can go back to sources and ultimately to close this off, we need to have a very important component that is going to be ground. Right. Then basically you can connect it. Connecting is just like how you would connect in any other circuit design platform. Okay, I'm sure everyone knows about different circuit design platforms available. So for most most part this is done. Okay, now to right now we need to make some measurements. To make measurements, you can just run this program. And if you see the program is getting simulated, I mean the source circuit is getting simulated, you can see the on the bottom right corner, you can see that the circuit is getting simulated. You also have some tools okay which enables you to make the measurements. Okay, let's say I want to make measurements across this resistor. I have something called Differential voltage probe. Feel free to you can just use it. Okay, differential probe means you need to give both positive and negative point. Normally, any measurement you make is going to be with respect to ground, but this one is standing apart. You can just right away and I will two points to make the measurement. And I connect the positive terminal here, negative terminal, you have to connect it here. Yeah, it needs to be placed on top of the, exactly on top of the wire. Okay, so I'm just placing it across the resistor. And now do you see, if you see, it's going to be acting like a resistor divider, resistor divider, potential divider. Okay, we are getting 12 volts here. Okay, so if you see across the rock, across the two resistors in series, okay, it's going to split, split across. They split by two. Okay, that's what happened. Right. And if you want, 
in order to make th things simpler, Multisim is also having options of including virtual instruments. If you don't want to use these instruments, okay, you can also use virtual instruments. So virtual instruments are available on the right hand side. Which you can gladly make use of. Right, so this will act like a simulation emulation of the instrument inside the multisim. So if you want to make some measurements of out of the as a simple circuit, let's say, okay, you can make use of these instruments. Okay, so next is going to be um, how to simulate it. Okay, again the run button, same old run button. Okay, but in order to view the output of the EMM, okay, you can just double click on it and measurements wherever you want to make use of it. Okay, you can make it across it. So combining these components, okay, you can product up your circuit quite rapidly and quite easily. And that's going to add a massive amount of value by saving a lot of time. Okay, instead of prototyping it in real world and again making changes. And if it's a small change, you can just solder it. Okay, but if it's not a small problem, okay, then there is a problem which could be solved in the earlier stage but haven't okay it would make it more costly because again the testing and everything should be done from the scratch okay so it's going to add a lot of stress but with these tools okay you can significantly decrease the amount of mistakes which you make okay so yeah now coming back to designing of the components you have been working on. So this particular model of the MVVD charge controller okay, involves implementation of buck converter okay, in order to charge a battery. Okay, this bad this solar panel, okay, one might ask um, how where can we find the solar panel model in the multisim? Okay, so to answer the question, um, it's not available directly as of now, just yet. Okay, if you want to download it, you have to use it from NA website. You can just download it and they will have it available. Okay, just on the go, you can make use of. Okay. So this is the picture of buck converter. Okay, which we intend to implement using NI lab view. I mean, multisim. The later part will send command from multisim to lab, lab view and the lab view will respond and again send the data back. So ultimately, a lot of calculations are happening at the back end, which we need to address. OK. So this is the buck converter. OK, so sometimes you may not find the components that you're looking for, and that's OK. OK, you can always go to this manufacturer, and either you can get the appropriate model in the multisim, Okay, so that is a good way. And the other way is you need to search for the spice model of the circuit, spice model of the component, so that you can implement it inside the lab view itself. Okay, so that there are people for that as well. Okay. So which you can make use of. So let's build this circuit component one by one. Okay, but now we need to understand where we can bring the solar panel component in the multisim because most of the charging station point as of now, okay, it requires us to use, uh, you know, if it's an alternating energy, okay, either it requires wind turbines, okay, if it's a remote area, okay, with a lot of space, okay, or we need to make use of, um, photovoltaic PV based, you know, PV based um, component. Okay, it's multisim or it's LT board. Okay, so let's start building the circuit right away. Then we can interface with the lab view.
ओके सो या I'm sorry. I'm just going straight away. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can just you uh, know let me know. So I'm assuming no questions. Okay, if you have questions, you can just drop them in the you know um, chat window, so I'll answer them. Okay, now implementation of this circuit in the multisim and validating it there. Okay, first thing we need to do is we need to set up how we can find this. Fault running components, okay. For and first we how we first in a you know so renewable energy, okay. First thing we need to look at is um, solar panel. How we can impl you know import the model solar panel model of the I mean, uh, model of the solar power plant inside the multisim because multisim is what is going to you uh, implement the electrical characteristics, okay. So to answer your question, multisim model. I mean, um, solar panel model. Okay, even though it's not directly available, like if I go to all groups and I type solar, it's highly unlikely that I'm going to get the solar panel here. Okay, even trying to type PV wouldn't make that much of a success. so as i already told you components are available already in the you know ni website okay all you have to do is you don't even go to ni website okay you just have to google it that you know a solar panel model in multisim okay it's the first link which is going to come up you can make use of that okay i have already copied my you know list okay this here Okay, so nothing is available. So in that case, what we have to do is we have to make use of something which already has the model. So for instance, okay, this particular program already has a solar panel available in it, and this is going to save me a lot of time and trouble. Now we have to ask how. Okay, so in order for solar panel to work, okay, light must strike on top of it, and depending on the intensity light, intensity of the light is what is going to drive the conversion of electrical energy into a potential, you no, know, uh, electrical energy. Okay, so light energy is going to be converted into electrical energy. So in that case, we should be able to control the level at which the power is generating as well. Okay, so how do we, you know, maintain that? So this model is the answer. Okay, if you double click on the solar panel model, okay, and go to basically pins. Okay, they don't have a name for that. Okay, they are just given as bi-rational. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, but we should be able to control the intensity as well. So that's the reason why we have something called input of you know we have a light intensity input as well.
okay so we have way to model uh, a solar panel in the multisim okay so how do we you know and by default okay it will have its own parameters in it okay but if you want to change something in that you can always customize anything okay you can right click you have properties and you have value and value you have something called edit model and there you go okay, you have something called spice model okay so like any other circuit design platform okay lab also is dependent upon a programming language called spice okay so that's what make this symposium, symposium you know uh, simulation possible okay so basically parameters you now if you want to tweak okay this equations are the ones which governs the rules of your pv model okay and they have just given a generic model for a solar panel okay but you know different solar panels will have different restrictions okay different values and you can see that here as well okay parameters are given separately okay so if you see you no know, short circuit circuit current okay output you no know, um, open circuit voltage okay so these are there some other things which you know are not same for every solar panel okay for depending on the model and make of solar panel is going to vary okay but here since we use a 50 watt solar panel okay which is modeled after that okay these are the values which have been found okay there are other comp constants like voltage constant current constant and series resistance shunt resistance right so these values if you want to change it okay you can go ahead and change it right so that's about it for this particular one okay depending on the type of the model solar panel we are going to use okay you just have to select these values okay most of the time these most of these values were found at you know um at the back of the solar panel okay which makes made it much easier okay but sometimes we need to measure these values and come out for a appropriate solution okay so yes i think someone has a question can we use matlab simulink um the point here is um yes you can use any tools to achieve the the, the appropriate you know uh, appropriate direction appropriate you know your uh, requirements okay solution but the point here is uh, what tools you use and how it's going to help you out. okay but rest assured you can do the same things using c and c++ also but how easily you achieve it and what are the you know value and what are the advantages which we have okay that's what matters and yes in matlab also i mean personally i am not a matlab developer so i really haven't seen it okay but we do have you know ways to interact with matlab so I, i'm sure that there are solutions in matlab and yeah, compared to i mean good question is this the what are the advantages of multisim when compared to other software right so as i already told here we can do the same things using any other tool okay tool is not really a very good you know um measuring quantity okay the success is behind the the idea okay if you ask me but what 
multi-sim offers here is typically when we create when we prototype something using simulation software our objective is um, move forward to implementation part okay we are not going to stop a simulation okay so it's not like um, most of the times in in, in industry we, we get the requirements okay then what we do is first we need to in order to test the proof of concept okay given by the customer we we hear them hear them out of the requirements okay then we simulate the aspects we will ask whether is this the intended out, outcome okay then if the outcome is what they expect okay then we start building the the components okay then you know um, we deploy it in the customer side okay but you know previously people used different softwares for different you know stages of the same uh, you know creation and the problem with that is if you want to you know um, simulate we use one software tool and in order to create it okay we need to use uh, embedded system design platform to design it okay and what our code we have written during the simulation will never be used in the implementation platform and previously that was okay okay but nowadays a lot of tools have come up okay which is which helps us reuse the code which you have you know done during the simulation okay so instead of reinvent the wheel again and again for different design aspects okay so we should be able to reuse the code which you have done using simulation during the you know, implementation part as well so the advantage in using multisim as you asked is since multisim can integrate with lab easily and lab view is what which we use in industry to you know, program the hardwares. So during the testing point, algorithm testing you know, uh, time, what we do is we develop the algorithm using lab view. And instead of controlling the actual hardware right away, we control the simulated software, simulated model, that is multi-sim multi -sim circuit. Okay, we control it and check the response. Okay, once you're satisfied with that, then we will go ahead with implementing the real hardware and expect the responses we'll check whether whatever we have done during the simulation is valid for real time as well this is possible because labview not only is a software tool okay it's also hardware programming tool so that co-simulation is possible in multi-sim and labby together but apart from the rest assured matab also has simulink Okay, Simulink also has, you know, automotive toolkits. Okay, but I'm not aware of those. Okay, I'm aware of those, but I you know I haven't worked on it. Okay, because we, our company offers solutions based on NI tools. But we do work with MATLAB, um, you know, um, engineers, okay, who developed a model using MATLAB. Okay, we can, we help them interface with hardware okay by using a toolkit in lab view called model interface toolkit okay where model is created using matlab and evaluate instead of using multi-sim model okay we use matlab's model to validate whether whatever they have created is proper or not right So yeah, so right now we have this solar panel model available with this. Now what you need to do is, um, once the solar panel is got, okay, we need to be able to give the, um, you know, irradiance value as input so to give irradiance value as input we don't have a separate input parameter for irradiance alone so rather what we can do is we can make use of you know a, a voltage source to act like a number so we can go to signal voltage source okay here we have something called dc interactive voltage with which i can vary the you know the values So this is the intensity, I mean, light intensity input, okay, in terms of irradiance. 
okay which i can give as a number input okay by using a voltage source and this is basically a ground of the solar panel so if i double click on the dc interactive voltage i can set up okay what are the parameters which needs to be considered okay the range of the parameters okay typically your irradiance is going to vary from 0 to 100 irradiance for parameter so here also we'll be varying 0 to 1000 so which we have here okay so then next is going to be the the power running switches okay the, the buck converter typically okay to do the you know, mppt components here okay basically um, the reason why we go for this is basically you know your uh, solar panel depending on the time of the day or uh, time okay, it's voltage is going to keep you know the power the amount of power level, level is going to change okay meaning it's uh, our voltage level is also going to keep on changing okay so we need to make use of an appropriate circuit okay in this case we have used buck converter okay but typically you can we may also expect a boost or a buck boost converter depending on the the voltage level which needs to be maintained okay we need to make use of it to maintain an appropriate voltage in order for us to charge the battery okay and battery or you know the charging station but the end, 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 end line is end of thing is okay we need to have a solar panel simulated then in order to convert this voltage level to something which can charge the, the battery or something okay to act like a charging station we need to have an appropriate power running circuit okay so here we have done not a normal you know um buck converter okay we have done a synchronous buck converter so that's why we have two switches So let's see it out. So here we have it. So where can we find the components? Okay, the, the components here is in the sense. Okay, we can go to um, transistor. And we have this MOSFET, whatever it is. Okay, and for prototyping, standpoint okay we have made use of uh, okay irf 520 so finding a irf 520 here is going to be a hectic task okay because if you see the number of transistors which we have is 7517 so instead of searching for it manually uh, just if you know the component value okay you can just type irf 520 it's going to be listed as one of the components and yes in order to drive the MOSFET okay you need to use an appropriate source voltage Okay, but let's just first bring the components first. Okay, we have two MOSFETs. Okay, and you know, a short key diode. Okay, short key diode, when we find a diode section and we have this short key diode here. And we have 1162 short key diode. I'm not gonna search manually, so I'm going to make use of one MBRB one zero four five G. As a matter of fact, we use two components, two of them. Okay, this is to prevent the um, reverse discharge of battery. If at all we use a battery. And the other components are 
normal components. So normal components in the sense we have this capacitor. Okay, so we have 200 microfarad capacitor. So I can go to place component. I can find basic capacitor and I can just type out the value of capacitor 100 micro. Okay, it's going to come up. And yeah, normal capacitor is also there. Uh, cap electrolytic capacitor is also there. Okay, in case of electrical capacitor, it's going to be, you know, polarized. So it was 100 microfarad. So I'm just, let me just place it here. Another one. So yeah, so one of the capacitors is placed here and the other one is placed over here. Next component is going to be inductor again as a basic component. Here we have the inductor. Okay, and the value of inductor is 33 micro entry. And that's it. But yeah, we are not, we are far from done. Okay, we are far from done because we need to make the connections. Okay, so, and also we need to generate some appropriate duty cycle. Okay, in order to control this. And that's not really a hard problem. Okay, so if you see in the search bar here, okay, so, NA has a specific way of dealing with power. Okay, there is Meldism as a way of dealing with power. Okay, and there are you know, plenty of converters available as it is. Okay, like the SMPS components are also available to in order for you to prototype anything. Okay, but we are going to go for power controllers. And if you see, it's not only like it's available for um, a PWM generator. Okay, so PWM generator, different types of PWM generator are available. Okay, we have PWM, PWM three phase. Okay, complementary PWM, okay, which is what we are going to use. Okay, and say so SPWM generator is also available to control three phase sine wave inverter. And now I'm just going to use a PWM complementary. Okay. And this is a PWM generator. Okay, which depending on the voltage range, okay, it's going to generate either zero, zero volts means it's going to, going to be generating zero percent duty cycle, and one volt means it's going to generate hundred percent duty cycle. So depending on the reference frequency and the values, it's going to generate the PWM. And how much frequency it's going to be in a set by us. For this particular model, okay, of the values of L and C have been taken by considering 50 kilohertz. Okay, so 50 kilohertz was considered. Okay, and the output amplitude is basically dependent upon the MOSFET switch on and off frequency. It's on and off, uh, you know, voltage. And here it's going to be basically 15 volts. So basically, in order to change this MOSFET, 10 volts going to be should be given to with respect to source. It should be given 10 volts, but about 10 volts. Okay, so 10 to 20 volts would be the appropriate range. Okay, so 15 is somewhere in middle. And of course, I cannot directly give it from here to here because whatever signal I generate using this with respect with respect to ground. And we need to give it with respect to source. 
so we'll add something else there okay but before that let us just finish this whole circle okay so output of the solar panel is connected to one end of the mosfet yes and the one end of the capacitor is connected over here and hope obviously we need to have a, an appropriate ground the ground is very important in the circuit So this is also going to the ground. This capacitor also should be connected to the ground, but you know, I can copy and paste one more ground instead of just wiring it. Okay, making it look less, you know, um, wire wireless. A lot of wire means your design will look very worst and then next this will go here this will be here and this will be here Now comes the driver part. In real world, we make use of uh, you know appropriate circuit to drive the MOSFETs. We can we not directly connect the source of PWM to the uh, directly to MOSFET. Okay, typically we use a bootstrap bootstrap you know, um, MOSFET driver or you know octo coupler coupler to drive it. Okay, anything is good. Um, but right now these opto couplers and you know bootstrap circuits okay are typically make made use of a voltage controlled voltage source and they are basically voltage controlled voltage source only okay so whatever uh, pulse which is given by the PWM converter it's going to be converted into a same characteristic but different voltage level okay specifically to power up the drive the you know, gate so even though you might find the components of opto coupler and stuff here itself Okay, it's better for simulation aspect to use something which is just simple. So in sources, we have something called controlled voltage sources, and we have something called voltage controlled voltage source, which we can make use of. So whatever signal you give in this terminal, okay, it's going to be reflected back over here. If it's 15 volts, okay, here if you see there is a, a ratio, ratio, a voltage gain. If I say 15 volts here, here also it's going to be 15 volts only. Okay, but this is with respect to ground. Okay, but whatever you say here is going to be with respect to this portion. Okay, so whatever I give here, since I give it using this, okay, this is tied directly to ground. Okay, I can again copy paste the ground. But this portion, portion. is going to be with respect to source. Okay. And similarly, here also you can repeat the same thing. Okay. 
Now on my DOS home, we can give the value of duty cycle here. Okay, again, you make use of the same thing. Okay, this is what we make use of the duty duty cycle. Okay, instead of um, 100 percentage, I mean 1000 volts, okay, we'll give from zero to one. Okay, zero meaning zero percent duty cycle, one meaning 100 percent duty cycle. So I can vary the duty cycle by like this. And at the output, I will make use of, for now, for testing it out, we can typically make use of a resistor. Okay, typically, let's say 470 ohm resistor. Okay, it need not be 470 ohm, okay, but let's assume. Okay, so before I switch to you know run this simulation, okay, our objective is to know um, how is it going to work. Okay, in order to check that, first I need to measure the uh, input voltage from the PV. Okay, this photovoltaic cell, and how the output is going to be responding across the battery. So to measure both voltage and current. I'll make use of this probe called as voltage and current probe. Okay, this is input from the solar panel. And this is across the load, typically a battery. And now let's just run the simulation. And as you can see right now, there is no voltage of any sort, very less number of voltage can okay, current. But oh, that's because right now we are not giving any, um, it's pitch dark, you can say. Okay, because irradiance here have been set to zero. Let's just, you know, pump to one kilo volt, meaning it's um, irradiance is 100. thousand okay you can see that it's maximum okay at least I I mean from the solar panel standpoint okay but still output is zero because your buck converter is not still charging anything okay zero means it's not going to allow anything to flow inside so let's just slowly increase it And you can see that you could be able to set an appropriate voltage. Okay, by varying the duty cycle. Okay, so. Right now, is we have a, a factor for combining both, you know, this whole equation to something which can be used to charge a battery. Right? So now, we have a, you know, a basis for doing this. But still, this is still in the simulation form factor only. Okay, still we have to, you know, explore ways to, you know, implementing this with uh, a, a way where we can expand it back to an implementation portion. Okay, like for example, right now, um, this charging point, let's say we are going to charge a 12 volt battery, for example. I mean, for automotive aspects, okay, no one will be using 12 volts battery. Okay, but, but let's say for example, okay, this... Uh, is you know, working because we have set a duty cycle of 63 percentage okay for this particular solar panel right so right now this is working okay because your 
irradiance is thousand. Okay, but we know that you no know, in any places this will not be constant. Okay, let's say it drops to let's say some fifty. For the same duty cycle, okay, you are going to see that its voltage is going to drop significantly. Okay, still let's say it's going to drop much more. Okay, it's going to still drop. And now let's say it's going to become pitched back. Okay, it's not thirteen volts anymore. Okay, so we need to have a control system which can adjust itself as much as possible, as long as it can charge the battery. Okay, to you know adjust itself to an appropriate duty cycle. Okay, until it can. So that's what you know. We'll make use of an appropriate MPPT algorithm. Okay, in order to make use of it. Okay, and that cannot be done in la you know multisim. Okay, because multisim is just this prototyping platform. Okay, but if you want to build something like that in la you know in in the NI ecosystem, the model has been already built using this multisim. Okay, but to test out this model, test out this algorithm, whatever algorithm we're going to develop, if you want to test it using this, okay, you can make use of lab view to do it. Okay, so yeah, so what are inputs like this? Okay, the duty cycle or irradiance. Okay, so these things will not no longer be controlled in multisim. Rather, Labby will send these commands from Multisim. Okay, and Multisim will respond, and the data will be sent back to Labby. But now the question will be, what exactly is this Labby now? Okay, to answer that question, Labby is a system design platform. Okay, it's a system development platform. Okay, which is Which program, which where the programming, uh, I know style is purely graphical. Okay, there is no uh, text-based syntaxes. Okay, so it's a drag and drop methodology. Okay, more like you can compare it with uh, a children's programming language called Scratch. Okay, but this is not used by children. This is used by total professionals, uh, actual engineers and scientists. Millions of engineers and scientists all over the world use this for. Development of the of their you know professional applications, okay in a in a professional format. And other reason is since Labby has been created for you know um into implementing with hardware, it has a large variety of ecosystem of hardware which you can integrate with. And this hardware cannot be need not be only programmed by a computer engineer, okay. This could be programmed by a simple electrical engineer who is well aware of. How to work with flowchart level, you know, design of tools. Okay, and this tool is used in, you know, of course, since NI is in, um, we all know what are the domains NI is. As I told you, automotive semiconductors. Okay, so this tool is also, you know, as toolkits with respect to those domains as well. And When we say NI, NI is not the only company which works works with LabVIEW. Okay, NI is the one which created LabVIEW, but in order to create the products, okay, there are several companies which use LabVIEW, okay, to make use of you know a development of their applications and to service their own clients, okay, in their own uh, domains which they are familiar with, okay, like this company called Bloomy. They are you no know, uh, automotive experts. They support the clients of you no know, Jaguar. um you know rolls royce okay when these proper companies have problems in their you know application development so but for that what exactly is this lab view so lab view actually stands for laboratory virtual instrumentation engineering workbench okay initially lab view was used for virtual instrumentation okay in order to integrate with computer based instrumentation cards and visualizing the output of the instrumentation in computers but nowadays things have gone much far okay labview is not just an instrumentation platform of course it's 
used to bringing data using instruments to uh, your computer but it's used for far 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 better things like you know automation uh, creating control systems of course is again automation and you know in, in several other domains okay for simulation okay etc etc and the program in lab we call it as eis okay virtual instrument okay it's a lab program which typically involves a software and hardware okay so when we say instruments of measuring voltage and current okay voltmeter and ammeter it has its own appearance okay and most of the people will be familiar with the appearance so when they expect voltmeter they would expect it to look like an voltmeter or if you look at a dmm in order for us to say it's a dmm it needs to have an appearance of the dmm so if you use a normal programming language it does not have any appearance of an instrument okay if you say measure voltage it's going to just give you a value but using lab view we can create a, a very good graphical user interface okay where the appearance of the instrument will reflect the appearance of the instrument physical instrument okay if you see oscilloscope there is going to be an appearance of the oscilloscope which you can emulate in the lab view environment I think someone has question. Oh, okay. So yeah. So the LabVIEW program, if you see, okay, it's going to consist of, um, you know, two windows. Okay, like any other programming tools, we will be having one place to code it and one place to view the output. But in LabVIEW, we'll have both of them together. Okay, this is the place where you can create the user interface, and this is the place where you can, you know, get the inputs and outputs. And parts of the BI. Okay, so front panel. Okay, it's just a user interface. Okay, you can, as you program. Okay, you also create user interfaces by side by side. Okay, in other programming language like right now the pro growing programming language Python. Okay, so if you see first, we design the code. Okay, we create the logic behind it. So once we are familiar with the logic, then we start with creating GUI using certain you know. We'll import some libraries specially used for GUI. Okay, so called like K Tinker or Now there are several other toolkits available. Okay, in libraries available. Okay, but in lab view, the advantage here is programming itself is GUI creation. Okay, meaning when you create your code, you side by side create your GUI as well. So you save ample amount of time. You don't spend time on GUI separately. You don't spend time on algorithm separately. Okay, because algorithm is the code. Algorithm is the GUI. and block diagram is a place where you write the code and here the code is your you know drag and drop based mechanism okay fully uh, data flow based okay flow chart based code okay it's full graphical meaning here the engineers and scientists do not relearn the logic behind the coding okay because they are already familiar with flow chart and the flow chart is what they convert into text based pro instead of converting this flow chart to test space code here you stop with the flow chart itself okay so that's how easy it is and in lab you you can just create simple vis with very good appearances okay you can use a code to acquire data from a hardware analyze the data as well as visualize the data as well and coding style is just you know drag and drop and output is also in separate window so here i have lab view so here i have lab view and i lab view okay so this is how a lab view window looks like so we have front panel and block diagram Okay, 
So how do we start programming this? Okay, one key, one might ask. So since we have two windows, okay, so this is a place where you will interact with the user. So if you see, we have something like you no know, numeric control. And if you right click on the front, if you, in lab view front panel, okay, you can see that there are different types of inputs and outputs which you can integrate with. In lab view, we call it as controls indicators. We deal with numbers, we deal with true or falses, we deal with letters, okay, and there are several types of other types of stuff as well. Like if you want to visualize the output in terms of waveforms, again, you have graphs and charts as well. Okay, so the visualization of output is really a very, you know, strength in lab view, you can say. Right? And also in in anything, okay, visualization is what drives, you know, the code. So if you say, okay, mobile apps, okay, if you don't visualize the data properly, people will not understand, okay, or they will misinterpret data. Okay, but here the chances are very slim because once you know how to showcase your data it's really easy so you can give number as you know with numeric control okay, you can say voltage one or you can also give you know a knob you can also use a knob okay to vary the value You can say voltage two. Then to view the output, we have something called numeric indicator. Okay, control is just for giving input. Okay, since lab you deal with data flow, um, we cannot make use of input as output and output as input directly. Okay. something like this so in other programming tools you'll have only variable you can assign variables or you can get the data back from the variables okay that easy but if you see in lab view since it's data flow either you can use one block as input or control okay or as indicator okay output this is input this is output okay, input means in terms of from the user okay this is the input okay this and if you see when I place voltage one, this voltage one is also available here. Meaning when I give data here, the data will come over here because this is the code. It gets executed and again output, if you connect something there, it comes over here. Okay, let's say I want to add both of these numbers together. So I can just connect it together and it's going to work as simple as possible. Okay, so just like how you connect components to inside the multisim, okay, the same level of communication will happen here as well. Okay, so these are called terminals, okay, which you can connect it. Okay, so the terminals will be connected to the addition function and the output will come over here it gets executed and to view the output of this we need to connect it from here to here so to execute the code you have this run button just like how you have this uh, run simulation button the multisim okay you have the same thing Okay. So this is what is lab view. Okay, you can give some other value here. Okay, you can vary this value by using graphical you know, interaction and you can run this. And you can also run this continuously, change values and see the you know, responses here as well. 
So this is lab in a nutshell. Okay, but you know lab is far more bigger than this. Okay, if you see, there are plenty of other things starting from lab basics in lab view to most intermediate components and most advanced concepts can also be covered here. Okay, but like any other programming tool, lab view is also an ocean. Okay, it also has several other things. Apart from that, lab view also has domain based components as well. Like if you want to interface with some hardware, okay, you have some hardware toolkits as well. Okay, so like if you want to inter interface with DMM or power supply or functionator Astroscope. Okay, you have certain hardware which we can kind of communicate with. Okay, the drivers also will be available in LabVIEW. Okay, and that will interact with, you know, this portion. Okay, but So if you have any questions, please let me know. I mean, is it possible to do renewable energy experiment in Addison? Yes, participants, if you are having any queries, please ask. Rajkumar, I would like to say that you are truly a uh, certified LabVIEW developer. Because okay. from the way you are performing the simulations, uh, we can very easily understand that the Hours you have put for getting expertise in this. Hats off to you, Rajkumar, for a wonderful session. Really, uh, the way you are doing the simulation is uh, super. Just like uh, we also used to train our students for performing various simulations. But at that time, we will be either looking into a circuit diagram or we will be just by hurting and we will be dragging each thing and we will be doing, uh, we will be making the connections accordingly and we will see the output in the scope. But uh, the way you are explaining and the way you are exhibiting uh, the lab view presentation, it was absolutely awesome. Hats off to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Rajkumar. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Actually, we I need one requirement where I have the panel and the battery. So I want to implement a different kind of algorithm. Means I want to test a different kind of uh, MPPT algorithm. So okay. For, th for that, I require a hardware. Okay. Where I can change only the MPPT algorithm. Okay. So voltage sensor, current sensor will be there. That data will be feeding to that processor. Okay. Is any kind of hardware setup is available with the N9? Um. Yeah. Sure. Like uh, you know, normally for prototyping of this type of uh, you know uh, components typically people you make use of you know a hardware called as ni compact view where you can you know the dump the the algorithm of uh, mppt okay you can write your own algorithm and you can uh, do you know whatever uh, voltage sensor implementation or you know current sensor integration along with it get data from the solar panel and you know um, process the uh, uh, the data to an alg you know certified algorithm then like MPPT, perturbation observe, incremental conductance or whatever um, MPPT algorithm which we are familiar with. Okay, then we can, you know, um, control the actual, you know, the uh, buck converter by, you know, controlling the, like one of the person has told, uh, uh, general purpose inverter control. So that could be used or, you know, you can use normal inverter kind of MOSFET controller to control the the buck converter components and you know um, check out whether it's controlling the the you know it's doing the job of the MPP charge controller properly or not. Okay, actually, so yeah, actually yeah. I don't have any idea about that any instruments. So okay. for your box, we need to feed the voltage sensor and the current sensor detail. Okay, so that market uh, sensor we can use it, or uh, we have to use the only the NI sensor. Uh, not exactly. So, like, uh, there is a very generic component called as voltage input. So, you just have a voltage input. Okay, there will be range. Okay, maybe you need to measure voltages like 60 up to 60 volts. Okay, so up to 60 volts it can measure, but you can use any other sensor which you are familiar with. 
okay it could be anything but it needs to have a range of 0 to let's say 60 volts dc or if you're going to measure ac okay you have voltage cards like 300 volt rms or 850 volt rms depending upon your usage okay. so you can use anything okay so i can feed my voltage and the current detail to that box then that box will give pwm output right yeah, PWM output, we do have PWM generator components as well. So that is also there. Okay, how many PWM output you can have? Because if I want to control directly three-phase inverter, I require some six uh, uh, output. Again, like it depends on the card, sir. So we have like uh, eight bit card, uh, eight, you know, eight, eight channel card, which is again one port, or maybe there is a different card which can generate up to 16 ports. So, and also each, you know, depending on the card, it can either generate per, channel it can generate maybe 100 you know uh, megahertz or 10 megahertz or any you know um, resolution whatever specifically you need okay again it all depends on what is the actual requirement for us so once we know that we will be able to um, generate it okay for simple 4 pwm output how much it will cost at the box um, again, uh, I'm this is technical person so cost and all I mean um, lastly I was supposed to show my you know um contact okay if i know the uh, full picture okay the big picture of what is uh, need, need to be implemented okay maybe i'll be able to suggest you an appropriate hardware and other things so that i need to talk with my sales team okay they will be able to show me I mean, tell me how much it will cost sure i will keep in touch so Very this is my contact session. yeah Thank you. I mean, Thank you, again, tomorrow we have another session. So if I have, if you have any questions, and again, I will be continuing with that. So the full you know, scale implementation tomorrow, I think I'll be handling BMS. So we'll be seeing that as well. Yeah, I think most of the faculty will be having this kind of doubt because we have that hardware existing setup. Only thing is we need to change our algorithm. Usually we will check with the MATLAB, but anyhow, we need to give some hardware output, right? So in keeping in so the there are several hardware you know ecosystems available in LabVIEW. Okay, which we can uh, make use of. Okay, thanks for sharing your contact. Nice, very nice session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is simulation software free or chargeable basis? Um, yeah, this lab is uh, a proprietary software from National Instruments. So if you are, we are going to use for a research purpose, then it's going to be chargeable basis. Okay, but let's say if you want to use it at home. Okay, so there is a version of LabVIEW called as LabVIEW Community Edition. Okay, so if you're not if you're not going to use it for commercial or you know for assignments or anything, you can make use of free of cost. Okay, but since most of us use for research purpose, then it's going to be you know um, you you do however have you know if you have a NI account, you can use it for 45 days for free. Okay, the full version, but after that again you need to go for a licensed version, again which you need to contact the salesperson for it from NI. And they will be able to help you out depending on your usage. Any other queries from participant side? Yeah, hi, uh, hi Rajkumar. This is Abhishek Singh from JSS Murda. Up, up, up. Your lecture was quite in depth. Uh, thank you for such a wonderful lecture. Yes, uh, yes. One, one, one thing I would like to know that since we are talking about the solar energy and uh, and EVs, okay, and we all know that EVs are limited by their battery capacities, and solar plates and their charging capacities is limited by their efficiency. Yes, sir. Yes, so, yes. So, 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 can you talk about the challenges that uh, occur may occur? Uh, basically, uh, we we what we see that uh, uh, developing a solely uh, charging system based on renewable is quite difficult. <laughs> so, one of our clients. Uh, Again, um, what they faced was uh, in order to, you know, um, increase, I mean, I mean, obviously one solar panel cannot be used. So there, there needs to be, uh, you know, a volume based, you know, solar plant which needs to be used. So, I mean, depending on the, the amount of, uh, you know, the solar panel, I mean, in order to prevent the uh, efficiency creepage, okay, not increase the efficiency, they basically made use of, uh, you know, a volume based solar panel implementation for this type of charging station okay and uh, they also did quite a lot of you know um, uh, you can say um, much more very specific to uh, renewable energy they made use of uh, specialized uh, 
uh, MOSFET, you know, components. So, you know, to prevent, um, uh, you know, um, we can say, you know, losses in the uh, uh, switching part. So, they may reserve specialized components for implementing this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Any other queries? Okay, now I need some feedback from participants end. Patma ma'am, can you please give your feedback to our presenter Rajkumar Rashigran? Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. So it's a very nice session. It is like a hands-on and a practical session. Thank you very much for your information, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for your questions also, ma'am. It was a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Okay, Rashkuma, thank you. We will meet again uh, uh, tomorrow for the third session, I guess. Uh, we will meet again tomorrow for the third session. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present at GC Talashari. It's been uh, quite an honor to be a part of this FTP pro Africa FTP program. So thank you for the participants as well as thank you for the uh, chair members as well. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, Rashkuma, for being with us also. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Yes, dear participants, I will be sharing with you the attendance link now. Basically, you all must understand that you too have you too have conducted or no other programs. There is no meaning in continuously asking for attendance link in the chat. I will be sharing it as soon as the program gets over or the session gets over. Because once if I share the attendance link, then all the participants will be shredding out like anything. Hope you understood. The attendance link is shared here. You may enter your attendance. I will be sharing the same attendance link in WhatsApp also. So if anybody is so urgent to leave, then they can leave and they can fill it from WhatsApp. Okay, only this attendance link, uh, I will be sharing it in WhatsApp. I see you people were continuously asking for it. Thank you, and we will meet for the non-technical session at 2 p.m. As all of you know that in Atal, FDP among the 15 sessions, one session will be a non-technical one, but it will be very interesting one. So all the participants are required to return back at 2 p.m. Thank you. Bye.